I'm a second generation beef farmer. I'm owner and manager of Colt Farms Limited in Southern Alberta. Pain mitigation in beef production has become a hotter topic. One of the things that we are adopting now is things like how does the animal feel? We feel better if we're not in stress or pain. We would feel the same thing about the cattle. As consumers are becoming ever more aware of what they're eating and not only want to know where their food comes from but how it was produced and proper pain mitigation is a good way for the industry to address the concerns that consumers have about the industry and make them feel better about the products that they are consuming. I think it's our moral obligation to take care of the animals that are directly under our care. We know cattle feel pain. We know that because when we give them analgesics or anesthetic, we can eliminate the pain responses. And some of those things include behavioral responses, physiological responses. I think now that we've accepted some of the things that our animals have to undergo are painful. It's just logical that the next step would be that we do something about it and pain mitigation is part of that. The incentives to the producer to use pain mitigating drugs are very simple. You'll be able to do your procedure much quicker and much more effective. The code of practice was developed by industry, but it was developed by industry in conjunction with veterinarians, with researchers, with some food industry people, with animal welfare uh, groups like humane societies all involved in this. The Beef Code of Practice has a couple of things about pain. It tells us branding and castration and dehorning are all relatively routine things that do cause pain. For these painful procedures, one of the best things you can do to reduce pain is to do it as soon as possible. Do it in young animals because the wound is smaller, they recover faster, and it probably hurts less. There was a lot of talk in the industry about pain mitigation and uh, an increased drive towards mandating it. We wanted to get ahead of the ball a little bit and uh, start to become familiar with it before it's mandated. Douglas Lake Ranch has a long history in the Nicola Valley between here and our other operation up at Williams Lake. We run approximately 9,000 mother cows between the two places. Uh, since 2014, we've used a product called Menicam on all our calves at, at branding. Calves at branding are generally between three and uh, six weeks of age. And uh, during the process, we also castrate and, and dehorn. And the upside for us is that we have noticed uh, uh, a quicker return to feed and just a overall improved well-being of the calf after the procedure. It's a fairly streamlined process. We already give three shots. One more shot wasn't a significant time factor there for us. It's only a couple seconds more to administer the, the Medicam. Producers report that calves that have been medicated for pain will follow mother, they will suckle more, and they will travel easier. It's best to do castrations as early as possible because the tissue area is much smaller and the blood supply is less developed and we believe that the innervation of that area is less developed. What the code of practice is, is that in January 1st of 2016, if you're castrating a bull that's nine months of age or older, you need to talk to your veterinarian and use the pain control that your veterinarian tells you to use. Two years after that, January 1st, 2018, that goes from nine months of age to six months. I would really encourage that we castrate these calves at a young, young age. The worst thing we see here is, is ranchers that have taken and left one nut in. Don't do that. That is the most painful procedure. That one costs us the most grief here, honestly, of, of anything. If you're conducting painful procedures on animals that are approaching 850 pounds, there is an element of danger. If you mitigate that pain, if you would theoretically prevent or minimize injury to the person doing the procedure. Dehorning is particularly painful once the horn attaches to the skull. So when a calf is born, if it has horns, the horn's actually loose, it wobbles, it's not directly connected to the skull. But probably around two to three months of age, that horn does get connected by a bone, and at that point, 
taking that horn off hurts an awful lot more. And so there's a requirement in the code of practice that as of January 1st, 2016, if you're dehorning after two or three months of age, after that horn is attached, you need to use pain control. One thing we do about avoiding having to dehorn is our buying procedure. We really try to avoid buying animals that have really aggressive sharp horns. However, if we ever got an animal that was had extreme horns that would actually start causing pain and suffering to other animals, then we would use pain mitigation to reduce the size of the horn. But we won't take the horn off at the base. We'll, we'll stub it so it's no longer pointy. Research on painful procedures is really hard research to do. Cattle are a, a prey species. They get eaten by other animals. And so millions of years of evolution have taught them to be stoic, to not show pain. Because if you watch the National Geographic specials, what you learn is that the lions eat the young ones and the old ones and the sick ones and the hurt ones. They're the easiest to catch. And so you can't necessarily hide that you're old or young, but what you can do is try to pretend you're not sick or in pain. And so it's only recently that we've got the expertise who can, can help us with that sort of thing. The reason that we've moved this way is not primarily financial. Yes, it costs money, but we like to look at the bigger picture of what we're doing. It's not, geez, how many dollars it's gonna cost. It's like, is the animal gonna be more comfortable? If the animal's more comfortable, my staff feel better about what they're doing because they don't see the cattle in pain and the animal feels better. I think it's a win-win for all of us. I think it's important that producers get ahead of the curve and, and not wait for things to be mandated to them. It would be better for the industry if, if producers were to voluntarily move in the direction that consumers want. I think in the end that'll improve the sellability of our product. We would like to view our whole operation and say, let's not just do one magical thing right. We focus on doing a hundred little things correctly. All these things tie into more of a, a, a mentality and approach to our business, which, which says, we care about our people, we care about our environment, and we care about our animals.